We shall see, Zach. Now that I have a beanie on, I'm serious. Let's, let's talk business. Let's talk business. Well, we can talk about The Force Awakens first because that's the first one. If you follow me. Oh, logic. we're talking about Star Wars. Oh, okay. All right. Let me switch gears. Um, I would just like to take the time to say that's a beautiful hat, Alex. It does look very cute on you. Did your mom knit that for you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually, I actually picked up. Uh, uh, what is that called? No, not knitting. Like, what's the other? Crocheting. Oh, yes. Crochet with the little... it's, it's a new hobby I have. Virtually, I, I virtually created this. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Start. Awakens. Start with Force Awakens. Uh, let's let's go with um. The marketing first. That was Ooh. perfect. It was perfect. Like. I, I don't have any complaints there. Like the first teaser trailer, ugh, oh, the feels, man. Like when you see the Millennium Falcon and then Chewie were home, ugh, oh. oh man. Like they nailed that. I mean, I just have to say, all the trailers are what got me into editing. Really? That was, that was why I started editing was because I saw those trailers and they just made me feel some type of way. And I'm just yeah. like, I want to be able to do something like this or be able to do this you know, be able to tell an expansive emotional story. It's it's everything I could have imagined from, you know, a new Star Wars film just from the trailer. I was like, hell yeah, this is going to be amazing. Um, I remember, I think I pre-ordered my tickets the day I saw the first trailer. Oh, wow. I never did that. I don't think I have ever pre-ordered. I don't even pre-order games. And uh, that was when I was like, dude, I have to make sure I get a seat because everyone's going to be buying these tickets. So I got to mm-hmm. get a seat with like a friend or two friends. If I however many seats I can get. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, Force Awakens is the only film that I saw, like, over five times in theaters. In I the think, theater? Wow. I think, I think I saw it at least, like, six or seven times. And My I think God. The film, I think <laughs> everything before that was always, like, once, maybe twice. And Force Awakens, I just went back with everyone to watch it. You know, like, my girlfriend at that time... Um, my friends at that time, people who've never seen Star Wars before at that time, like, I was taking everyone to go see that film because it was a good kind of, like like introduction but mm-hmm. also addition to the fandom so it was like one of those things it's just like the magic of star wars and then you know we we can get into what happened later but as far as the marketing standpoint goes it was genius what do you think kat i agree and kind of to echo what zach was saying like the the feels and i as someone who being nine years old, didn't go see Revenge of the Sith in theaters, you know, that would have been like the only time I would have gone to see a Star Wars film like in theater. So I had never seen a Star Wars movie in a movie theater. So this that was The Force Awakens to me, like that is the nostalgia of that experience, like being able to like go and see like the rebirth of Star Wars happening on the big screen with today's technology and just the Mm -hmm. excitement of like, oh my gosh, like this was just the first of three new movies we're getting like that was that was that's the highlight of that experience for me and no matter how i feel about like the sequels like i always am so just like i loved that i think is my favorite sequel viewing experience probably like just the the rush of like oh my gosh this is happening like we're watching star wars and it's like brand new i remember sitting in the theater and the crawl when the crawl came up i i think that was when i realized that star wars is it's something else like like I've never felt like that in the theater before like I was like almost moved to tears because like the crawl was happening and it's like I never thought I would see another Star Wars movie in theaters again uh and I obviously was too young to like really appreciate that it was Star Wars when I was in like fifth grade and Revenge of the Sith came out Mm -hmm. but yeah that that is like my favorite part of the sequels like you said is just that initial oh my god this is happening um magic of star wars yeah mm-hmm. yeah i you know I, going back to the the trailer i just i think the line that like i think the first time i saw it i was just like freaking out like like i think i don't really know if like any cinema aside from star wars actually like makes me tear up really? but i i just yeah i really don't think anything else i mean like obviously i feel things but I'm, you ever I'm watch lord be, of the rings <laughs> yeah no it, it, see it, that, did, that, that doesn't do it for me you know like i love no. i love them but i'm not gonna like watch those and 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 like tear up or be like wow you know like like it, it's just something maybe it's you know because i've been so immersed in star wars like almost my entire life pretty much um that that it just has like a different 
it's something different as Zach said. But anyway, the, the lines that I remember in the trailer when he said, like, the Force, the Jedi, and, like, those cuts, um, and it shows Luke's hand, and then he says they're real. Dude, I, I just remember seeing that, like, the first time, and I fucking started like, tearing up and bawling and just, like... <laughs> Like, like, this is so cool, dude. Like, holy shit. Like, being being a Star Wars, like, nerd or whatever is going to be cool now. You know, like, it was just one yeah. of those things where I was like, now it's now it's mainstream again. Now everyone's going to be talking about it. Now it's like you can be that person that talks about it and not be like, oh, yeah, Star Wars. Oh, yeah, that thing from 2006 or whatever. Yeah. Like, like well, that, when's the last one come out? Yeah, that kind of thing. Now it's all back and everything. And I was all yeah. excited about it. And the trailers it's, itself are, are gems, you know, like yeah. those, those are things that I can just rewatch over and over again mm-hmm. and, and feel like that's what Star Wars is and then watch the movie and then feel a different way. But um, anyways, uh, we'll get into now, I guess, what did you guys think of, like, I guess the, the title crawl, like of, of what, what, how it compares to like other Star Wars films. I know there's like a lot of critique around like how it was poorly written and lazy and also just like, you know, okay, um, into the whole kind of revamping of A New Hope, into the whole whatever, if you think that that's a good idea, that was a good idea or not, or if they should have just completely start off, like started where George Lucas was talking about starting off with like the the, um, the whole Wills situation, how it was going to dive more deeper into the force in episode seven. I, I think they had a regarding the like, should they have rehashed A New Hope, basically. I, I think it it's easier in hindsight to say that they shouldn't have. But if you think back to what was it? 2015 when it came out, like everybody, like a lot of people hated the prequels. They were probably spooked into wanting to try something different because the prequels did that and look how that turned out or so they thought. So I, I think it was much more of a tough decision to, to not rehash the, the originals versus doing something that was virtually the same thing, but like with a shiny coat of paint. Paint. So I, I never really faulted The Force Awakens that much for doing it because it did generate a lot of excitement in Star Wars, um, broke records, uh, reduced Alex to tears. I mean, it, it did all the right things, but uh, I, I more so take, take umbrage with what came after it. Like it, it, it set a lot up and it didn't follow through, but I'm like... I'm not a huge fan of the rehashing, but I understand it is basically my take. Yeah, I don't know. I must just be stupid. (laughs) And I always say this in like my reviews or whatever as a disclaimer, but like when I am actively watching a movie, my brain just like doesn't draw connections. Like this feels like a new hope. Like I didn't feel that when I was watching The Force Awakens and I, which again, maybe speaks to my like stupidity and lack of ability to draw connections and realize these are the same thing or like, this is a cookie cookie cutter format of this. But I, for me, like, I feel like the sequels and kind of like what Alex was saying, you know, trying to either bring something new. Like, I feel like the sequels to me, at least I feel distinct. The originals have their own vibe. The prequels have their own vibe. And like the sequels have like their own feel to me. Granted, there's a perspective where I look at it like they kind of are reintroducing the whole world of Star Wars and that's kind of a good cop-out for it but but if you're gonna do that at least you know follow a formula of like where the story is going instead of you know just figuring it out on the spot all the time um which is like seemingly what they were doing because I remember after the Force Awakens everyone was like oh like it's it's forgiven you're just reintroducing Star Wars to everyone bringing everyone back together like in the same way that Star Wars has always done um uh it was, it was, it was just like, if you're going to, if you want to bring back like a, a like if you're, if you're going to bring that, bring, ah, bring back the Death Star, but only this time, it's going to be something that destroys multiple planets, you know? It's bigger. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's like cool, but if I don't like the, if you, another thing is like, if you don't like the characters, like that whole premise just falls flat anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if, uh, if A New Hope, like if you hated all the characters, I feel like that whole like it's like you don't really care if they win or not, you know. Yeah. The whole rebellion winning was like such a cool thing, such a big thing because you love all the characters and you're rooting for them. And you just hated Tarkin. You hated, you know. I don't know if you. I don't know if people hated Vader. I think they were just scared of him. And they just think, how are they going to beat beat him, you know? And then when they beat him, it's like, oh wow, cool, you know. He's he's floating away in space away. I wonder what's going to happen in the next one. So I will say that I do agree with you, but I think 
for the first like half of the force awakens honestly like i was i was into it like the beginning of the movie where kylo and his his boys roll up yeah so like lore santeca village that was sick i was like yeah this is awesome and then the blood was kind of weird though the what the blood oh the mask <laughs> uh, yeah. i mean i know why they did it but like yeah. i just feel like the whole blood thing it's like doesn't aren't like you know you're not but you have he, to like, know who he is <laughs> like he, he didn't get stabbed he's not i know, you know he, he got, got shot. shot with yeah. like a, an eye on whatever a blast gonna like, cauterize no. immediately i don't know that was just what it's like what did he like stab himself afterwards he's like yeah. Fuck Where's this? The identify <laughs> yourself <laughs> No, but like I thought it got off to a really good start. <laughs> I was I was down with Ray. Probably I was on board. Oh, I loved Ray till the end. <laughs> I, I didn't like I kind of fell off the wagon when they went to when they went to Taco Dana and, and saw Maz and like everything after that, it was like pretty much okay, so this is this is the end of a new hope all over again. Like but I, I was kind of like cat, like the first time I watched it, I wasn't really thinking about it analytically i was like oh my god this is star wars like I'll, I'll i think it. everyone was yeah exactly yeah. and then like the more time that like i put between the, the original viewing and then like i just got to stir with it i was like hmm that was really it, similar to a new hope <laughs> actually <laughs> and, and and like building off what you said you liked the movie I, dude like i said all the harrison ford stuff like what's crazy to me is like Harrison Ford doesn't even really like Star Wars, you know. He's no. just he just does it to do it. He doesn't you know? like fact, anything, dude. And the, well, I know, but the fact that he like is like probably the most likable character in that entire movie is really a testament to his acting abilities. Yeah. You know? Like I think you know Lucas really lucked out with who he casted. They just happened to be powerhouses, you know. But uh, on top of what you were saying, you said you liked the first half pretty much until it kind of got into um Tagodana and and everything else. Right. Um, I I wanted to bring up the idea of. You know, I think everyone was talking about this, like when when Kylo was reaching for the saber and trying to, you know, pull it out of the snow. And then all of a sudden, like someone else pulls it out. Like, how cool would that have been if it was Luke? You know, like, know. Why did, it, why did know. it have to be Rey? I thought it was for a second. Like, why did it have to be Ray? I remember like, I, not, I mean, I got chills regardless because like that theme, the, the yeah. uh, burning homestead theme mm -hmm. is like one of the greatest themes in Star Wars. And it just it hits you no matter who, no matter what scenario. Like that hits you, you know, but like if that was Luke with the burning homestead theme going all the way back to a new hope, like why didn't they do that? It, it would have been, it would have made so much more sense for, for Luke to, you know, sense it and come and, and do what he did the same way he came to rescue Grogu. You know what I mean? It's just like, there's just things that like they could have done there that would have been so much cooler. Granted, I don't, maybe they wanted to, to not rely on old characters, but like they milked them for all that they were worth anyway. So why not, you know, completely milk them and do like fan service as well? <laughs> I, I don't know like I, I just I, I just remember the, the feeling of being in the like I went to the theater like uh, six times I think you know and each time you know I think there was a, a, a large number of people who haven't seen the movie yet yeah. and just seeing their reactions and hearing their reactions to certain things was like so magical and so beautiful because like at the end like when you see Luke everyone was like oh my god it's like they were freaking out you know <laughs> and, and the movies after that no one was reacting like that you know like they root like it just is so sad. Like the magic was there. They had it, you know, they had the power to really build off of what they created in the first one. Um, but like, I just remember hearing those reactions and those feelings and like, even my dad, like, like, like my dad's like a big, like, like he likes star Wars. Like when he was a kid, he watched the new hope along with everyone else, like a million times in the theaters. Cause it was so revolutionary and so different. And like, so he has respect for star Wars. He's not like a big lore fanatic or anything. And he might forget some things. But like he knows who the main characters are, and and uh, and not only was Han Solo's favorite, but he loved Luke, you know. And and when he was able to see them on screen and and their presence and everything, like like he he loved it. He loved like the whole like rebellion, you know. I I, I hated the fact that they were called the Resistance. That was kind of weird. Like they have, to, mm. they have to, they're still explaining that. But like the fact that you know it's kind of like not only did the rebellion win twice. But now they're still like cat playing catch up to like a brand new random empire that you know emerged yeah, out of nowhere. Right. That was, that, but that's a different argument. But I, but what I'm saying is like my, like people who aren't avid Star Wars fans who aren't super engaged felt it in that film. I will say though, like the excitement going into the Last Jedi, that was the most hype I was out of all of them. Like especially going in with that cliffhanger and the Last Jedi marketing was like like watching that trailer like at the where was it i think star wars celebration that year when they released it and 
everyone was there like watching that I was like this is this is amazing this is gonna be amazing I was like I, I was that was the most hype going into any of the sequel movies that I was for sure I had such high hopes for The Last Jedi because um like like Kat said it like The Force Awakens set up so much and it was like oh this is gonna be hype but also like Ryan Johnson I thought directed the best episode of Breaking Bad so I was like oh here we go. Oh, this guy knows what's what. He knows how to handle pre-established characters. Hey, Loki, ah. which episode of Breaking Bad was his? Because I had Ozzy, no idea. Ozzy Mandias. A uh, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Breaking yeah. Bad. I'm gonna give you three seconds. <laughs> it's already a sin if you haven't seen it. So screw you. <laughs> it's the one where Hank died. <laughs> oh, that was him. <gasps> yeah. Right. So I was like, he's gonna do incredible. Like. This is the man for the job. Yeah. Plus, I, I liked Looper, too. I thought Looper was pretty good. Well, everyone was hyped around JJ because it seemed like he was able to turn around the Star Trek series um, into franchise films. Um, just for, you know, profit-wise, yeah. But, like, immersion-wise, it was just a different style that I think that they thought he could do Star Wars really well with. Um, granted, they also make the argument that he's a better director, not a writer. Because like, he didn't write the Star Trek films. Mm. Right. But in this case, he wrote the Star Wars films. So... Building off of what Kat was saying, um, we were talking about The Last Jedi and their marketing. From my perspective, I was actually extremely disappointed with the first trailer. And I actually had a sense that maybe something really? was going, something was wrong. Because not only did the production value look a little weird, um, it seemed like there wasn't a story. Like, it was like you were watching, it just seemed like a lot of flashes and then a couple quotes from, like, abstract parts of the film. And that from right there, I was like, okay, so they're just not showing us anything. That's cool. Like, mm -hmm. I guess I guess we're just, we're just in for a big surprise. And then next trailers came out. Um, they were a little better, but it was still like they still gave us nothing, you know. And I was still mm -hmm. kind of like, "What is going to happen?" You know. It's and then time every for the Jedi to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then that happened. And then everyone. And then everyone's like, "Oh no, it's uh, he he like everyone all like the speculation coming around about about what that quote meant or if it was just you know mixed and spiced together or whatever. And he actually didn't say that and all that stuff, you know, as Star Wars fans do. Yeah. <laughs> but. It, it really, that's how it struck me. And I was watching those trailers and I was like, these are nowhere near as good as the Force Awakens ones, you know? And I- Really? And and I was actually a little like, okay, you know, like they're they're, they're cool, but like I, I, the music is amazing. The music's always amazing. It's, it's the cuts of the Force Awakens trailer and the sound design that really hit me, you know? Yeah. Um, and the Last Jedi one just didn't hit me the same way. And I, and I actually had a weird feeling from the get go, but I just, you know, my bias, I, mean, I just was like, no, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be the best, like, it's going to be the best Star Wars film ever, you know, you know? Um, and then going into it, I remember going with a couple of my buds, but we went in there, we were watching it. And I just remember, like, as soon as we saw Yoda, we were just like, okay, like, like, that's awesome. You know, I think that was the only, that was the only moment of, of the entire movie where we were like, oh, cool. Something's happening. I think I think we were like kind of confused the entire movie. Like we were like watching everything and we we're like, where is this going? And then like we were trying to convince ourselves that it was like, you know, really good, you know. And then at the end, it just left you it left that bitter taste in your mouth, and you're just like, I feel like everything that was important happened really fast at the end, and everything in the beginning was just shitting on characters that already had that meant a lot to the 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 franchise. And I remember leaving that and we're like, what did you guys think? And they're like. I don't know. I got to go back again. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go back again and watch it. I was like, no way. I actually don't like a Star Wars movie. I was like, wow. Like, like, mm. so, like, you know, from a production standpoint, it was filmed. It's probably one of the most beautiful Star Wars movies. Like, I think like it, the color palette, everything looks like spectacular, but everything else was like either subpar or like very mediocre at best. And I was just like, so confused, like what the hell they were even doing or what they even thought. Like they like the, I remember like the build up to it, Kathleen Kennedy and all of them were saying like, we're going to bring Ryan on, you know, full time. We're going to do, he's going to do the next one. He's going to do an old Republic trilogy or something, whatever that was talking about. And, you know, he's going to be a big part of Lucasfilm moving forward because we just had such a good time with him. And everyone was hyped about it. They were like, okay, cool. Like, like obviously Force Awakens was, you know, pretty good. Like I, I, if she has, if she's more excited about this one than she was Force Awakens, Last Jedi is probably going to be the, like really good and we're all going to be able to reunite as Star Wars fans and everything. Yeah, yeah, I was hyped for it because I thought the marketing looked so dark. Like I was like, this is mm -hmm. going to be a really dark 
movie, especially, you know, with that final line, like, it's time for the Jedi to end. When the posters got released, I have it over here, like, <laughs> the red and black, like, behind theme. Behind your sunset. I know, yeah. <laughs> like, when they dropped the poster and it had the red and the red font and the title, I was like, this looks like it's going to be, like, really dark and, like, intense. And I was excited about that. Um, and I agree. I had the same exact type of reaction when I saw it. I was like, all right, I need to process and definitely like see it again i think my my fatal flaw is whenever i'm in a movie i'm like this is this is amazing i'm just like like breathtaking like it's i think it's like great i'm obsessed and then i leave and then kind of like how zach was saying you take some time away and you process it and then you go on twitter and go online and see what other people are saying and you're like oh god wait are they right and then you see it again and you're like I don't know, but I, I will say like going into that, I was super excited watching it. I was super excited. Although I often forget like that Yoda shows up, like there's so much of that movie that I don't remember yeah. like the good parts of it now, because, you know, we focus so much on the aspects that we don't like, but you, you were talking about Yoda. I'm like, I forget he even shows up, but yeah, I don't know. I felt similarly though, like that definitely needed processing but i i know that i immediately was kind of like i don't i don't believe that luke is dead i'm like did they really mean that like is that for real or like is he like i i, I was very on the fence about the way it ended off that was at the time after first watching it was the only thing that kind of ruined it for me and i was like I don't know. Like I, 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 I refused to accept it as fact. I was like, I don't, they're just playing with us. It's fine. But, but yeah, no, that definitely required um, several viewings after, after the yeah. initial shock. Yeah. I remember my dad was like, Oh no, he'll be back in the next one. Like, he's yeah. <laughs> and, and I was he like, technically was true. <laughs> yeah. True. Just yeah. Not the, but not the way we wanted. I'll just kind of relay my, my feelings at the end. Like you guys have, I remember sitting in the theater, people filing out, just like, like looking at the floor, trying to, because I had this this weird feeling, like just overwhelmingly weird feeling about this movie after watching it, and it took me about two hours. Like I went to, I was, I saw it with my friend, and then we went to In and Out, and it wasn't until we were at In and Out eating a burger that I realized I don't like. A Star Wars movie like this is what it feels like to not like a Star Wars movie and it was just like the worst feeling this bitter ass taste. did it yeah. just like hit you like you know what that actually wasn't good or like did you start to piece it together and like I didn't like that I didn't like that and then you're like the whole movie kind of was bad for me like did it hit you like a, a ton of bricks or did you like come to the the realization I would, I would say like it did hit me like as the movie was going on like i was like in internally like not really because like you said like with star wars i tend to i tend to like not watch it analytically the first yeah. time so even so i still felt weird about it as the movie was going on like hmm. in, internally i was like i don't know if i like that like uh, that's weird and, and then and then when it ended i i just like had this alien feeling that I'd never felt before from a Star Wars movie. And I think it took me a little while to identify what that feeling was. And it was, yeah, I didn't like that movie at all. And then it like made me angry. I was like, <laughs> what did they do this for? Like I, I, then I did all the piecing together, like exactly what I don't like about the movie, exactly where I thought the movie went wrong. And I was like, why did they do that? Like, I remember thinking, you know, if they had just not killed Luke, I probably would have been lukewarm on the movie. And then oh, was, lukewarm. You know, Get I, it? Luke, yeah. Uh -huh. But I remember thinking, at least they didn't kill Luke. And then it's like, wait, why are they showing Luke sitting on this cliff? Why is this such an emotional looking moment? And then he vanishes. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, like, you know, there's nothing worse than watching a movie and then thinking you like it and then hearing other opinions on things and then realizing, wait, that's true. Oh, shit. I know <laughs> that is the you curse know, of the you know what I mean? for me. No, and I yeah. honestly wish I had never gone and looked at other people's opinions or gone on Twitter or read articles because I do for all of the movies. I do initially like <laughs> sorry, <Air Force>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like how it's gradually. I'm so changed. sorry. <laughs> I haven't even been paying attention, but then I look over and I'm like, now he's wearing a bandit mask. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this on. The pig one like got it. me. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sorry. No, but like for each of them, I walked out and I was like, you know what? I I liked it. Like it, I loved it. for each of the viewing experiences. I, I never felt disappointed. Like during, like I really just kind of like black out and take everything in and then come back to it. Like you know when it's over and when you leave and then your body starts to process what just happened. But I that for me is like I wonder if I would feel differently about the sequels. Not that I despise them, but I think I am definitely guilty of feeling very like uh I absorb what I see on Twitter and when I see someone else really ripping into something then I start to question it and I feel that way even about the prequels like when people point out bad things about the prequels I'm like I guess you're right like there's so... nothing wrong with the prequels <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so that's why I'm like I wish I kind of <laughs> never had gone on Try to keep a straight face. Twitter or anything to see what other people are saying because I'm very much uh, a victim to, you know, believing other people's opinions over my own initial reaction and then having that completely like taint my, what, my like vision of it and stuff like that. I mean, that's why I like to converse with, like, I think before I kind of actually knew film and everything. That was when I was watching those movies, you know, like, I, it's not like I didn't. It was just more like I didn't have as much like a, I didn't have that like eye that you kind of develop when you have to take these classes. that are You just film so, majors, you. <laughs> well, well they're, they're just so like, like, well, what's the word? Um, I don't know, like, not not boring, but like, you know what I mean? Like, like taxing that you have to like macroanalyze little things about filmmaking and all these other things yeah. you probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise. And then you look at it, you know, on a bigger scale, like when you start watching actual films, because you had to do that, you know, almost day in, day out for, well, for me, it was like two years. I don't know. I don't know if Zach took a bunch of film classes before he took, before his no, major. They didn't but, have shit at my community college. So uh, <laughs> unfortunately, but <laughs> I, I do agree with you. Like, I think that's why, and we'll get to, we'll get to the rise of Scott Walker later, but I do think that's why I, I view the rise of Skywalker as like a worse film than the last Jedi is because I was, I was trained in the arts of, of filmmaking <laughs> by the time I watched that movie. And so I was able to no longer turn my brain off when watching. And do you know what happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, cast so aside. <laughs> <laughs> I was forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Alex recites a monologue now. Dude, what's funny is that I most of like these quotes, like whether who's that? Oh, it's my sister. Uh, <laughs> most most of like these quotes, I this is completely separate. I'm sorry for completely changing, it, but most of the no, quotes like not. that I get from Ahsoka and from Maul and everything. It's from editing. I, yeah, there's no way I would have remembered that because I there's no way that I've watched them that many times. Yeah, because I just started watching all the Clone Wars like a couple years ago, so it's like. I only know all of this because of the number of times I've had to listen to these quotes and search from over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So not that I would remember them. It's just when that, when it, the time comes and I have to recite something, I'm probably going to remember it almost word for word <laughs> and the rhythm and the pitch. And yeah. You were meant to be so much more. <laughs> I was uh, destined to become so. I was once apprenticed <laughs> to the most powerful being in the galaxy. In the galaxy once. <laughs> uh, where were we? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, oh. yeah, you should have been there, cat. Like when we were in college, like we would just sit in the cafeteria and just like slip in Star Wars quotes to our conversation. <laughs> so you just got to do that with no shame. Be like, they're losers if they don't get it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so much cooler to be a nerd and have emotional connection to. A fandom than not to have emotional connection to a fandom. Exactly. exactly. Otherwise, who are you? You know. <laughs> so what? What was You're the no first? One. What was the first thing in the Last Jedi that you that like triggered the alarms? That like, oh, I don't know if I like this. Okay. For you guys, let me let me have some. Not Vietnam learning flashbacks. Ray's heritage for me that was it. The fact that I left the theater with more questions than I had going in, and I, that could be you know my fault for going in with the expectation like I want to know Ray's parents now. Like that was the one thing I wanted to get out of this movie because there is such a buildup and mystery around her. And I was like, all right, they got to give us that fuel so we can go into the final movie, like knowing, yes, this is her foundation. This is who she is, yada, yada. And so when we didn't know that, granted, I thought the mirror scene and all of that was really cool. Like I think uh, my favorite aspect of The Last Jedi, and I think its strongest aspect is the character development 
even though we don't learn a lot much more about Ray, we at least get to see more of her like internal battle there and like struggle and like you know her desperation and then we feel that desperation to like learn who she is and so I thought you know watching the the whole mirror thing like that was so different for like Star Wars I felt and so I appreciated that but I was just like that for me was like the straw that I was like why couldn't they just give us one answer to the biggest question that they are like shoving in our faces like who is this girl like can you please the tell girl. us <laughs> yeah exactly um yeah i see i'm actually trying to figure out if i just have a, a severe bias to ray because i'm just attracted to daisy ridley or not <laughs> um, I, I i just i don't know because like i remember i loved her in force awakens except for a couple things i wish like there was more development and more trials tribulations all that stuff but then the last Jedi came, I was like, oh, I mean, I think I can come up with some explanation why this is all happening. And then I was, I was like, why, why am I even doing that? Like, and then I think it got even worse as the, as the Rise of Skywalker came, came around. But I think in the last Jedi, the thing for me, um, going into it, I was super excited. Saw a two hours and 45 minute runtime. I was even more excited. They're going to have, I was like, they're going to have so much cool stuff in this one. Like, it's going to be so sick. They're going to dive into all the character development, dive in more into Kylo. The Knights of Ren are going to appear. All this cool stuff is gonna happen um and then uh, after like 30 minutes i was like there's like what's happening what, like what like like first of all there were the bombers in, in space when there's no gravity that was interesting <laughs> um and then i was like okay i can forgive that and then there was like the weird story about the the um what's her face is i actually forgot her name what's, rose what's, yeah what rose is like sister or whatever oh. i just i just saw her name like yesterday and what I, is her sister's name yeah oh. page yeah like that. And, and we were like oh she's gonna be like a, an important character and then nope she just yeah she just yeah. oh my sister died you know the bombers do make sense though because in space like when you get something started like momentum wise it's just gonna go in that direction yeah but it no no because no wouldn't it wouldn't it be like a vacuum wouldn't it just kind of like no like they drop it different? down and then it just continues going in that direction until it hits something and gets stopped but it wouldn't it wouldn't it was reacting it wasn't kind of reacting the same way that the gravity would take it into something it's like isn't it more like like if there's zero gravity you're not it's not going to have like a continual no, I mean it'll in space like the mo like the moment. There's nothing to like. Like I know Star Wars in general isn't fucking scientific. Yeah, I mean I just <laughs> think it, like you can like you can't shoot lasers in space. Oh, that's no I know you can't space. do that. Yeah, but it's just like that was just so blatantly kind of like, like I know what they were doing, but I just didn't like that. And then that was like their last like group of ships too. That was even weirder. It's like yeah, we just have all of these bombers. Let's just go hopefully blow up that one dreadnought. But there's like several others. It doesn't matter. Um, but like we'll sacrifice everything here now. But when they get into the Ray part, which is what I was waiting for, they're like, they're like, where's Ray? And then it goes to her finally hanging out with Luke and then the throw over the shoulder. That was the moment where I was like, okay, what's going on? The throw over the shoulder. Yeah, what's yeah. going on here? What is this? I like I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just sit here and watch the whole thing first before I start like laughing. Cause like I remember the amount of people that were laughing in the theaters when that happened. Mm was like they were like what <laughs> like why <laughs> you know and and i just I, and then the, the the milking of the teeth thing and then everyone was just oh laughing gosh. even more you didn't and like it, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the highlight of the movie for you yeah. <laughs> and i know these are all things that people say talk about all the time but for me i watched that and i was like luke isn't one of my favorite characters but i never wanted him to, wanted to see him do any of that exactly exactly and i was like okay like not only is leia weak but now luke is weak too and then han you know like like i, I didn't have an issue with han dying honestly like i was okay with the force awakens and everything and him him going that way you know because that's where you were like okay kylo is gonna fucking do whatever he wants whatever he needs to to be anakin or whatever you know and and i was on board with all of that until the last shot i came around um and it ended open ended. Like it, it was like, it was like, how are we gonna move on from here? Like they even say it at the end. Like how do we move on from Ray's? Like how do we move on from this? We've got everybody we need, all eight of us. <laughs> yeah, and and she's sitting there with a broken lightsaber, and it's like we can do this, you know. And it's like, 
it's like, sure, that's like extremely optimistic, but why are you even in that position in the first place? <laughs> we don't even know. Like, why Why did you only have one ship and a bunch of random bombers that all just like, you know, all blew up there anyway and didn't really do any damage? And then you lost your, your second base. Now you're on the run. Now there's a space field problem. Now, it, it, where's the characters? <laughs> mm-hmm. What? Like who? Like who is Ray? You know who? Like like Kat said, who is Ray? Uh, why is Poe all of a sudden being so submissive and weird? And then why is Finn just you know, like not not simping? But why is like why does Finn have no character at all? Like why is Finn only relying on on how badly he wants to see Ray all the time and not you know his own person for like wanting to help the resistance as they call themselves now uh, to to become to like stop the first order like he always like it was more like about him like ray ray <laughs> you know it was it's all oh about God. ray instead of what he left in the first place for i think the moment they ruined finn's character was at the beginning of the last jedi when he tries to like dip again and he's like, oh, I'm gonna take this escape pod and get out of here. And then, and then Rose is like, What are you doing? Like, oh, you're the big hero. And he's like, Oh yeah, I'm a big hero. And then he's he's trying to run away again. That was weird. Dude. That he was did that in the bizarre. first one, and then like learned from it. Like yeah. with characters, you don't have them repeat the same mistakes because that it like rewinds his character development. It just didn't. That's but he, he like, wasn't just bail. He was going to try to find Ray, correct? No, I think he was getting out of there because he realized, he, Oh, we're screwed. He broke out of his back to recovery thing yeah. and was like dripping everywhere like a moron <laughs> like not knowing where he is and then like he's literally like comic relief and like they were going for like i hated that you know like because he was way more of a character than a comic relief character jar jar was a comic relief character yeah. you know like finn is not that character and they were putting him in that role uh, on that note i have been talking a lot is there anything else <laughs> you want to say cat no i was gonna say i About the agree last completely and i hate how I feel badly that John Boyega really is framed in the force awakens and in the marketing to be, he's like a main leading like character. And then it kind of does dwindle down to it's the Ray show, which is the thing that I dislike about the sequels. It doesn't feel as much of like the team effort as it feels like the, the companionship between Padme, Anakin and Obi-Wan, you know, that dynamic or like, why on traveling with Obi-Wan? Like, I don't, I don't feel any of that. And I think it does just eventually get peeled down to everyone else is the sidekick to Ray. Not that that's an issue at all, but for me, I hated that that is what Finn's character boiled down to after having such a strong start in The Force Awakens and then everything after that. He's just, oh, he's uh, Kelly Marie Tran's sidekick. Oh, now he's going to be like Jenna's sidekick and they're going to be doing stuff together. Oh, that's like, what her name was. Mm-hmm. Dude, I, I don't even know. I, I don't know like, her name. And like, I don't know uh, the chick with the helmet's name either. The red. Zuri? And I, yeah. I thought, and I would have loved to see more of her too. We were saying something about traveling in Star Wars. Yeah. Like that was something I actually realized that in The Last Jedi. I forgot to mention this that, that in The Last Jedi um, and the prequels and even, the, even in A New Hope, like there's a lot of like, like travel time you know like like going in between different worlds like multiple stories multiple angles like it seemed like it was all relatively you know a plot b plot and then the c plot was like either non-existent but like the a plot was relying on the c plot that didn't exist and then the b plot was like oh let's save the animals but that has something to do with any of the other plots and it was just it was like one of the most bizarre structures of any of any film i've ever seen and I think that's where it got even like the casual viewers confused because like, wait, what matters here? Mm-hmm. You know, like, are we really going to talk about like problems that we have on our planet in this like universe? Like, is there time for that? And I and I and I'd say no, like to spend that much time on something that's in a completely different world, a completely different galaxy. Like why they have to relate it to real world issues here is terrible because we're trying to escape. So I think the whole, you know, hero's journey thing with with the prequels and with the new and with uh, the original trilogy, just always traveling with your heroes, going to different places, seeing new things. Um, like just the whole mystery and investigative nature of all the, all the films, it's like the sequels never had it. It was like very like, like everything just kind of progressed because it had to, it wasn't like because something was progressing it. It was like, they're here, but they're going to be there just because that's just where it's going. You know, it's not like, I don't know. It just seemed very, 
like not only simplistic but like uh uh like what, what's what, what's the term zach what's the term where it's like i'm not inside your head i don't know what you're trying <laughs> to say. like MacGuffin devices that just kind of move things convenient or yeah, like, coincidental it's plot just like armor. it's well there's that too but i think everything has plot armor it's just how you do it and, it, and i just think <laughs> that like it, it, it's it's just there's so much they could have you know provided for why you're doing something um like showing instead of telling all the time too. Like they do a lot of telling and explaining things instead of just like doing it. I mean, and they they catered to the casual fan in, in that in that trilogy. And like, look at the Mandalorian. I think it it's more catering towards the Star Wars fan. And mm -hmm. what that does is you allow the Star Wars fans to basically become your hype men when you cater to them. And then they get the casual fans excited too because they're hearing, oh my god, the show is amazing from like people who like Star Wars. So that just generates more hype for your show and look what it's done for the Mandalorian. But I, I think that what Alex was saying is a problem with the sequels, but I think the biggest problem with the new characters for me was that I didn't buy that they cared about each other. Like I, I didn't buy that they had actual mm. relationships and friendships. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of the one I did buy would have been Ray and Finn, but then they didn't have them meet really in the next movie. So they didn't develop that, that relationship further. And then they just kept like pulling the characters apart and like they were, there was no camaraderie. There was no um, development of those relationships. And then at the end and in the rise of Skywalker, they tried to do that, but it was too late. I was already, I wasn't invested anymore and it didn't, it just felt like too little too late and I didn't buy it and I just wanted it to be over. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree hundred percent. And that's why I remember me and Kat had a conversation about Raylo. Um, oh it, God. Don't get <laughs> well, 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 like the thing is, like I saw what it could have been, and it would have been like I feel like I would have liked it because it would have been like a reverse, you know, um, Padme Anakin. Yeah. And like it could have been so cool. Like it could have been like you know, it could have been like that thing, like that, like it's like she has, you know, now the, like like she has like the power as opposed to, you know, Anakin Padme. It's like a reverse kind of thing, and Ben kind of is kind of like that, that that weirdly subservient, but also in a weird limbo thing, but also like you know he does. Like he's just conflicted, you know. Wears a crop top and with. A, he wears a crop top, yeah. you know. Has has like ha wears makeup now, you know. It's like all, all, all the all that all that beautiful stuff. But I, I, it's like. I I remember like going going in. I did what did we do that live stream before the Rise of Skywalker? Or did we do it after? Oh, yeah, afterwards you when I like you interrogated you about why you like Raylo so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's more like yeah, like I said, it's more of like the potential of what it could have been rather than what it actually is yeah um uh i i think that just the, the just you know looking at adam driver you think like he probably you know has to do all these you know foam rollers on his back from carrying everything all the time <laughs> um I, I i just can't can't get over like if they had i don't I, if they would have had i think any other actor um play kylo i don't i think the films would have just never been seen again <laughs> Like, I, I think that without Kylo Ren, like, they don't have a sequel trilogy anymore. Because everything is just, you don't care. It's boring. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's just kind of like, why? And then you, you're just left with questions all day. But, like, the performance of Adam Driver as Kylo Ren is what kind of keeps you there. And, like, granted, you know, him and him and Ray have their moments. Like, there's some things where you actually feel for it, you know. But other, other than that, like, it's just so basic and so simple and so boring. And I hate saying that. No, yeah, totally. I mean, it's it's telling that all of the actors like want nothing to do with Star Wars ever again. Like, <sighs> I think John Boyega was like, hell no. Mm -hmm. Daisy Ridley doesn't seem too interested. Kyle, or not Kyle, Adam Driver. Adam Driver oh, is God. like the Han Solo of this. He's not going to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Exactly. After this. He doesn't no, really no, yeah. care that much. It seems like he's too good to. to yeah, care. he doesn't. Like, yeah, he's going to do other things. And yeah. um, I think I think. Uh, Freaking what? What's Poe's actor's name? I always forget. Oscar Isaac. Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Isaac. He said that he would only do Star Wars again if he needed another house, and he's not going to need another house. But it's not just in California, sad. Like, at least it's just sad. Like they didn't have a good time. It seems. But anyway, okay. Let's get into. Do you want to get into Tros now? Because we didn't really talk about it. Tros. Is that what yeah, you call it? Tros. Tros. Yeah. Let's the Rise of Skywalker. Tros. Tros. Sure. Tros. Yes. So like, I'll just echo what Cat was saying. Like, I felt like their performances in the Rise of Skywalker indicated that they didn't care 
the most mm. of like any of the movies i think like i just really? felt like they were they were all done with it to me i don't know if i was just projecting that i was done with it <laughs> that's possible hmm. but I, I don't know i just that whole movie it just felt like everyone was like let's just get this over with hmm. i love your pearls interesting see this is why it's cool to get your guys like filmmaking standpoint i didn't yeah. feel that but i i i say this knowing like from an acting standpoint it's really hard to give a performance your all when your character doesn't have a backstory and your character isn't fleshed out like if i were to if you're gonna land the lead role in three films and they're like we don't know anything about you so have fun. Like, what are you supposed to do when you have nothing to go off Good of? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so We're it's counting just like, on you. <laughs> yeah, and like you know, with Adam Driver, it's like you don't find out till the last minute. You know which way he's gonna go. Like that's really hard to execute, and you know, try to keep people rooting for you while still being the antagonist. And so, like, I do give them credit for doing all you can do as an actor when you're given literally nothing, no fleshing out of your character at all. So, but that's interesting that you, you think you can, like you can tell in their performances that like they were just exhausted at that point. <laughs> see, see, like I said, I think the only people that I picked up on that were, were John Boyega, obviously Carrie Fisher and, uh, well, actually Carrie Fisher and Les Jedi, sorry. Um, uh, John Boyega, Poe and, um yeah oscar isaac and um um who am i missing because i because i honestly thought i honestly felt like ray was was really trying i thought i felt like daisy ridley was really trying yeah um, i felt like adam no, driver was really trying too i i felt it from both of them at, at times you know i felt like they were really because they had to you know like they mm -hmm. were they were the and then i think at the as soon as oscar and john kind of realized their their characters really mean nothing anymore and they're just yeah. there as far as performance from from Ray and Kylo, like like I said, like what, you can talk shit about like the dialogue or how it unfolded, but like the moments where like they had to be emotional together, like I I, I honestly felt it. Like whether it was unwarranted for most of it or not, their their acting was still good, you know. Um, it's just how how things unfolded and how it got to those dramatic moments is what people kind of relate the acting to. And I think that's unfair because like they didn't really have control over the script or, or what they had to act out, you know? So I think they did the best with what they had. So um, I, I think that the, the rise of Skywalker is Ray's best movie in my opinion and Kylo's worst in my opinion. Really? Yeah. That's, I think that Ray finally has like, like you said, like a backstory to work with, like, oh my god, I'm a Palpatine, like Yeah. <laughs> and then Actually, like I can agree with you on that. I think she starts to like exhibit flaws, which is like uh, it's huge for me. Like I love flawed characters and like I just don't think Ray was until the Rise of Skywalker. Mm. She starts giving into her anger more. Um, she kind of loses to Kylo on that in the water fight. I love that. Yeah, I needed and, that. And so like I do think that she was better in that movie. And I think Kylo was kind of just like the sidekick of her development in that situation. Whereas like in the force awakens, a lot of it was like, Oh my God, like I'm going to, I want to kill my dad. I want to like scrub the solo name away from me. I want to get to Luke Skywalker and kill him. And then um, the last Jedi, it was, it was, I think about equal with him and Ray, like they both had equal amounts of development, but yeah, I, I really did like Ray in the rise of Skywalker. I just thought it was a little too late too too yeah. little too late. Yeah, like he always kind of struck me as like the spoiled rich Anakin. You know, he was a spoiled kid that did, didn't like his dad because he wasn't there. So he acted out. Whereas Anakin was like, he was a slave his entire life and things didn't work out ever. So he never, he, yeah. the one thing that did work out, he didn't want to lose it. As a result, terrible things happen. Um, with Kylo, it just kind of like, it progressed from, you know, the spoiled rich kid to, wow, he actually has like some, some weird, like, like, like deep emotion and depth behind him also. Um, from what it was before he turned to the dark side, but it's like who, who like like the like the fact that Snoke was controlled by Palpatine and all that other thing just kind of made it weird. And then and then just like 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 the fact that he's so conflicted now, like his character is like so backwards in front that like he's now like a super like he he's so conflicted now that like he he can sense that he still has call to the light, but he also doesn't 
want to leave the dark side, but he also does. And then all of a sudden he's like, wait, let's rule together. Wait, no, that's not rule together. Wait, I don't know anymore. Like, I, I just feel like his, I feel like his character in the film didn't even know, you know, like, it, 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 like granted, I know I'm sure that's what they went for, but it, it just was so contradictory. His character was so contradictory in the third film that yeah. it just, the, the moments where like, it's supposed to hit you a certain way. Like, oh, he, he's good now or wait, no, he isn't. He's just understood now. Like, is it more like he, he never, he was never good anymore. He's just understood now. Like, it doesn't mean that he's going to, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, like there's so much like, like layers of depth to like who he is or where they were going that if you just look at it from a simplistic viewpoint, it's literally, he was so conflicted at the beginning, sees the girl. Now he's really conflicted. Kills Han Solo to prove that he's not conflicted. Now he's like, okay, now I'm, now I'm, now I'm really bad, but he, it doesn't matter because he wants to kill Snoke and rule with Ray now. Um, for his own selfish reasons, again, like, I, it, it's just so, it's just so confusing to me, um, his character and where it progresses from start to finish, that the fact that it ends with a kiss and he just dies, is like, it's like very like, 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 wow. Uh, going into the Rise of Skywalker, I was just like, I don't, I have no predictions. I'm not gonna <laughs> like, guess anything, but my only hope was like, Please just find some way to wrap Kylo up, even if it means full blown send him to the dark side to the point of no return, and Ray has to take him out, and that just has to be it. Like I was ready for like I just want a definitive direction. Like I don't care what you like, just figure it out. Like that was what I was most excited for going into the Rise of Skywalker, and what I didn't want to be let down with. How are you going to wrap up Kylo Ren's character in a way that isn't just lazy and? let's just kill him off and not brush up like any of that or like, I you know, totally agree. I, yeah. I I think my biggest thing going into that movie was that I desperately didn't want it to end the same way return of the Jedi did. I was like, it needs to find a way to distinguish itself from that movie. And it didn't like, it ended the same way. Like they killed Palpatine um, Palpatine's quote unquote apprentice, AKA like Kylo, he dies, he gets redeemed and then dies like just like vader did it's the same thing and like i really wanted kylo to stay bad and be too far gone yeah he has to defeat him because i think that's not everybody gets redeemed some people are evil until the end but did you guys think about that that shot in the trailer where it was evil ray i think this is an interesting i knew i knew it was a vision or something yeah. i knew i knew we weren't gonna see that like i knew almost immediately that it was just a snippet or a vision of mm-hmm. like a yeah. little ploy to get our yeah. attention i was pissed off about that because if you think about it why are you showing it to, that to us like you're not gonna win either way to, like lucasfilm like i like either we're gonna assume it's a vision and so we're not gonna care or she legitimately does go bad and you've just spoiled that for us so yeah it's just yeah, like no, true. you're not gonna win there back into the marketing aspect of that film i was so disappointed with those trailers as well oh yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah, what did you think, Kat? Did you like those trailers? They weren't very revealing, correct? If I'm remembering, like it pretty much if, was if like, If anything, right. it showed everything you didn't want to see. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> like, from my I, perspective. Like I saw I the haven't... horses, I was like, no. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just a little, I don't know. I wasn't super hype coming off of The Last Jedi and I was so obsessed with The Last Jedi marketing that I you know, wasn't as, you know, moved by the Rise of Skywalker stuff, but I feel like it was so vague. I was like, all right, no idea yeah. what this is going to be about. And it was just such a mystery, Kinda which like is fine. Jedi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which, I mean, it's fine, but I feel like I, with Star Wars, I kind of really hate going into it, not having any idea. And I didn't think it helped that, you know, the marketing was so vague and then all the spoilers get leaked. So we go from having, all right, open mind, this could be anything and everything. And then slowly the the movie starts getting released and you're like, you can't go on Twitter because it's all out there now. So and then they like, had a Duel of Fates trailer where like, oh. I know. Oh, sick. Dude, that we're gonna was hear that. sweet. We're going to hear a new version of this track. Nope. No. Oh, I, I nope. was... Don't get me started on that. Don't get me started on that. I was really upset about that. I was Maul's like, they're playing alive the again. 
Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> The only he's thing like that can save the sequels. He's literally just a force ghost fighting people now. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, God. he's just fighting Kenobi's force ghost. <laughs> he's, just, he's just in the background the entire time, like a meme, like fighting Kenobi. Like they're just they're just in like a a time lap, like a uh, 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 what's it called, like a like not parallax. What's it called when like you're like you just keep reliving the same thing over and over again, and they're just time in the loop? background. Yeah, Don't like I guess move. a time loop. I'm here to bargain. Yeah, you just hear them in the background. It's like, oh, it's just Maul and Kenobi fighting in the distance again. God Ignore them. Yeah. <laughs> They've been at this for years. They've been at this. <laughs> Even in death, those old geezers don't stop. <laughs> oh, Gosh. man. It's a friendly, friendly rivalry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, he only killed everyone Obi-Wan ever killed. Yeah. That's, that's, that's beside the point. Um, They're over it. He's a Jedi. He can get over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dear God, what were but, we even talking about? <laughs> we were talking about Tros. 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 Um, and the marketing. Uh, I was I was going to say I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, shit. Did you guys get anything leaked for you? Yeah. Was, what yeah. was there to leak? I, rem- I oh, remember Palpy, like the I whole guess. plot. The whole well, actually, plot, Poppy was yeah. already in the goddamn plot. No, no, like oh, no. the whole plot got leaked. I, didn't, I, yeah. I remember I actually saw it got leaked. I refused. I, I don't like looking at any of that me either i was like just can't go online i I think i was off youtube for like a week i read it because i didn't care anymore and i I was like well that's stupid i hope that doesn't happen (laughs) that sounds fake i thought it sounded fake and then i was watching it i was like okay so chewie's dead so he's if the leak's true he's gonna come back and then he came back and i was just like oh god oh no this is happening was there a leak about Anakin not being in it? I feel like that was a huge I think so. thing that got out that I, I was refusing to. I can't believe to. they they didn't have him in it. I can't. I just it. I try to get over it. I I I have to get over what it. What were they even thinking? Like they were they just like people don't want to see Anakin? Yeah. Or was it more like a Hayden was like no, I want 1 billion dollars and they're just like oh, <laughs> yeah. do it. No yeah. way, dude. Like after that reception he got at Star Wars Celebration, I think he realizes that people love him again. Mm-hmm. I don't He's know. So get back into acting after after he he comes in on the Kenobi series. Hopefully, Dude. I yeah. don't know. I try to justify his absence from. This is what I told myself to like, kind of wound my broken, mend my broken heart. You know, after not seeing him in the Rise of Skywalker, when that was like the one thing that I wanted out of that film. But I was like. <sighs> Maybe I just need to let go of wanting this to be so heavily injected with like the prequel energy as a totally like prequel biased person. I'm like, I need to just like let that go and accept that this isn't the prequels and this isn't a remake of all that. And like, not even like Anakin can save it at this point. And I feel like also half of us would have been so excited if Anakin did come back. And then I feel like if they did throw him in there, I like at the last second to appease the, you know, fan base that was desperately, you know, wanting to see him. I think half of us would have enjoyed it, but then half of the fan base would have been like, why would they do that? Like the last minute you're just going to throw in Anakin to try to like save everything that you ruined, yada, yada, yada. Like some of us would have enjoyed it and others wouldn't have been as like forgiving. Mm-hmm. I feel like so. That's fair. I think regardless, like those of us who didn't see him were disappointed, but like. But they brought back Han Solo. Like, you know, Han Solo was a vision. Like why? Yeah, they, they should have had Anakin show up in The Force Awakens because it, it would have filled a plot hole because if if Kylo wants to be like Darth Vader so much, why yeah. wouldn't it can be like, yo, man, I was wrong. Like, you shouldn't be doing this. Like, I know that's well, something. That another, yeah, happened. another thing. Another thing is like he was saying that uh, he was every voice inside of his head the entire time. So Anakin was never even talking. To him. Like, so yeah. that means Anakin was like, I mean, like obviously he was being manipulated. But why wouldn't Anakin have come to him? I know. Alan? Yeah, exactly. Like, also, hey. like, why didn't Han or Leia or Luke be like, hey, yeah, your grandfather was really bad for a little bit, but he he pulled through at the end. Like, just know that you had a cool <laughs> granddad, even though he yeah. was evil. Like, did he not know this? Like, oh, I know that that was like a huge qualm that people had with well, they, the they, whole they thing. Say, like, yeah, they say like Han was never there. Uh, c- fucking Leia was probably, you know, busy Indeed. leading the rebellion and everything. And maybe he just never really had a figure to, to sit down and, and talk Maybe. with him about things. And the only figure to him, I guess, in that regard was Luke. And I feel like Luke he was, was busy just, with Grogu at this he was, point. He was, he was busy being his Zen self and not getting yeah. deep about things. 
You know what I mean? Which is why like, you'd think Anakin would, would from the beyond, at least like offer some companion. Like, why not? Like, why yeah. wouldn't he be like the new Obi-Wan, like coming mm-hmm. in and, yeah. and like, you know, being a nice guidance for Kylo? Like, what was the, yeah, there's so many cool things they could have done. And yeah, like just, Anakin would have wanted to do that because he never got to be a father or be like this parental figure, really. That's yeah, true. imagine him hanging out with Luke and just, oh, dude. See, this was the issue when I don't, when I, all right, now that it's been removed from the pre or the sequels, and I actually wanted to ask you guys this, like, I'm a firm believer that, like, time heals all wounds and, like, the passage of time can really kind of impact how I view a movie. And so I, I you know think this about like game of thrones i'm like maybe i'll give it a couple of years and then rewatch it and feel differently sequels maybe i'll you know rewatch them later down the line and have a newfound appreciation for them do you guys like envision this happening for yourselves like after we get out of this you know we're still kind of in this like <laughs> this pit of like the sequel like consequences on the fandom i feel like and i feel like once we get over this hurdle once you know, Kenobi and more Mandalorian and all this new stuff comes out to kind of take our minds off of it. Do you envision yourselves maybe after feeling separated from the sequels for a little bit, having different feelings about them or feeling differently, rewatching them again down the line? I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. That's that's kind of, I feel like I'll feel like that forever. Like, I'm not mad. Yeah. I, I He's angry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't hate them. I just, I don't care. I want to move on. And he does. I, care. <laughs> I mean, we're doing this big, this big uh, stream. Well, not stream, but like Clearly. This, yeah, <laughs> we don't, we don't care, but what, let us it's do this fine. like 30 hour thing. Yeah. But like, uh-huh. I, I don't think they should be scrubbed from Canon because I think that just prevents a, a big old, I think that's the stupidest argument. It'd be such like, an issue. People who actually think that that is going to happen, like, I'm sorry. I just, it's not. Like, and I no. wouldn't want it to either. Like, we don't need that. And how poorly does that reflect on us as a fandom? Like, there's a reason everyone cringes when you even just mention Star Wars these <laughs> days. Like, why? Like, that would just be like. I think there's a lot of room to kind of piece it together to so that the films aren't the main source of, of uh plot and content which is terrible but i think mm-hmm. they can do it that way and and make the sequels kind of like an addition like like you can watch these you don't have to but you can watch yeah. these if you want to mm-hmm. you know it's just more like like the movies are now comics so you can just read off to the side and now the movie the tv series are now going to be the main canon i agree i think i'm more interested in like the quote-unquote feloni verse if you will like Hmm. the what, what what's going to happen with ahsoka what where's ezra what's going to happen with the mandalorian but it just sucks that these stories are going to have to tiptoe around the sequels because they don't seem to have any impact on those jesus christ on those <laughs> sorry i'm trying to find a good one <laughs> i'll just stay i'll just stay with <laughs> they don't have any impact on the the sequels so they're not they're gonna have to tiptoe around them so it's just unfortunate that they exist but you can't get rid of them. It, it would look bad, like you said, Kat. It would confuse a lot of the casual fans. Um, and Disney would have to admit that they were wrong and they screwed up. And I don't That's think big, big companies don't like to do that. So yeah. I think it's just something that if I were running the show, I would probably finish up the Filoni verse or whatever he's working on. And then I'd jump like a couple hundred years in the future. If I wanted to do anything after the rise of Skywalker, I would, Ooh, really? that I was would gonna just be my move next on question. Like, do you think we will ever see post sequel era content or like, do you think that's stuff that anyone even wants to see? Because I don't know. I kind of liked, I like, you know, the whole, sequels coming to be conceived obviously implies that okay something else is wrong in the universe worthy enough of having three movies worth to deal with it like i kind of as much as it you know i don't like that it implies that shit goes wrong it's nice to know like things are still happening and so like i feel like i'm kind of interested in seeing like yeah no it's not just happy rainbows again like after the rise of skywalker like there's gonna be other stuff to deal with i don't know i'm, I'm kind of like would that maybe mend some of our like uh dislike towards the sequels if we saw more content or do you think people would just immediately like trash that and have no interest at all i 
think realistically how much conflict can you have in like these i don't know what was it like 80 years from like the prequels prequels uh original sequels there's so much conflict and i just feel like it would be reasonable for there to be like peace for a little while like maybe 100 years or 50 years or whatever i wouldn't be opposed to seeing ray again like if they want to do that in like 20 years and daisy release like in her early 50s yeah i wouldn't be she's opposed 30 or, wait she's 30. she's like 27 28 yeah she's well, young dude she's older than us but not by much um so you've got a she's chance taken too. you've got a chance i think she's taken too <laughs> alex is like keeping tabs. i think I, I think she's engaged actually i think there were engagement rumors yeah sorry man I sorry <laughs> i mean not yet yeah but, give yeah. us some yeah i think you need to wait some time <laughs> like but yeah. like, like zach said yeah in 20 years sure <laughs> 20 good. years oh god because there's gonna be i think there's gonna be so much star wars so, you know for a while oh no I and, oh, yeah and i just think that the established stuff is what they can put out with how greedy and demanding they are to get content out i think if you create a whole new era um with what limited time they're giving their create their their teams it's like you just can't do that right now like you need to just stick to the stuff that you know or even go back you know, and, and, and build off of some of the stuff that's already been established. It's never been touched yet. Like the old Republic, et cetera. Do you want to yeah. talk about like rogue one and solo too? Yes. Love Dude. Or not. Solo. I have a, I have a funny story about solo actually. You share. So I went to Cat, see, it with... don't be boring. <laughs> all right. I'll, God, I'll, I'll, I'll do, it. I'll do one. All right. Give me, I'll, all right. I'll, I'll do Choose one. one. I'm going to be rainbow for a little bit. Okay. Okay continue zach <laughs> all right zach go so i went to see solo with my friend who at that point the only movie the only star wars movie he had seen was phantom menace so as we're walking into the theater he goes so the the only one i've seen is the one with darth maul and i was like oh yeah darth maul's not gonna be in this one so you're you're not gonna really you're not gonna know any characters but it should be oh. fine and so lo and behold <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the movie, Darth Maul shows up, and we're just looking at each other, stunned. He's like, "I thought you said, Darth Maul. I thought you said, I thought Maul was dead." And I was like, "Well, he's not dead, but I didn't think he'd be in this movie." <laughs> That's amazing! Oh my gosh! So yeah, at one point, he had only coincidentally seen the two movies that Maul was in. Feature Ray Park. Yeah. It's funny because Tom and I had actually he was like looking at like the premiere pics or whatever. He was like, oh, Ray Park was at the premiere of Solo. We were like, I guess he got an invite. Like, that's cool. Good for him. Like, having didn't piece it together at all or even <laughs> think to jump to the conclusion, like, is Darth Maul going to be in this movie? Like, we were like, oh, cool. Good for him. He's just hanging out. Like, and then he's just chilling, bro. Yeah. Like, he actually, yeah, that's just actually what he was doing normally is just dressing up as Maul. And they just happened to, you know, record him being mall i yes. love this george is rolling the whole time <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then ray later was like wait you were recording me it's like oh well cool. <laughs> he's actually darth maul i don't know if you guys knew that um in real life so he grew uh, the horns yeah like like he's he's yeah he's his name his ray park is just an alias he's like for solo i remember actually i had a lot I, I brought a lot of buds who didn't like as you said i brought a buds who aren't huge star wars fans and they watch them they're like i actually like that like that was that was a, that was pretty yeah. cool and uh i was like i, I was honestly surprised because i came out of it like i mean it was a lot better than i was expecting but i didn't think it was like just amazing you know yeah i think i think the whole going on to like the battlegrounds of like the empire taking over plans and stuff was super cool Very trying to be like point, the cool though. kids solo well, was like surprisingly like you didn't have to be a huge Star Wars fan to appreciate it. Like it was surprisingly like you could casually. I also was super surprised and it was very disheartening. Like we went to the theater, I think on the Thursday before like, you know, the Friday premiere or whatever. It was us and maybe like six other people. The theater was dead empty wow. and it was really like, this is Yo, where we are right yeah, now. Yeah, it was dead empty. Yeah, when it was I went, really yeah, upsetting. There was no yeah. yeah, and and then the end, and I was like, people are missing out. Like this is actually really good. I loved, 
uh, Childish Gambino's, uh, I don't, what is his actual name? Donald Glover. <laughs> I love Donald Glover's, uh, oh my God, what is his character name? Lando Calrissian. Yes, I'm thinking of all of his names. <laughs> I loved Donald <laughs> Glover, Amelia Clark, the who was Lando's robot. Oh my God, what is her name? I was like, these are all really likable, like new characters and stuff. I was like surprisingly... It, like surprised at how amazing I thought the movie was, especially considering I was part of the crowd that wasn't necessarily like, oh great, a Han Solo movie. Sorry if you can hear the siren. They're closing in on you. Yeah. <laughs> we got him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wasn't like. They don't recognize me. <laughs> over the moon ecstatic about getting a Han Solo film of all characters. Not that he's not a great character, but I was like. Is this really the person we want to see more? Like, I, I would have chosen other people first to have their own film series. 100% agree. But that said, I still was, like, surprisingly, like, this is amazing. And I low-key thought, like, correct me if I'm wrong, like, I thought this was going to be a trilogy and allegedly still is, right? I don't, is it? Because uh, I know it didn't make money. I, I think yeah. they lost way too much money for them to even consider that anymore. Really? Because I remember we were watching... I'm removing my filters. <laughs> uh, we were watching, like, the... Boring! A Star Wars Celebration, like, you know, stream, and they were interviewing the actress who plays Emphis Ness, and she let it kind of slip, like, yes, yeah, since it's a trilogy. And I was like, yeah. does this mean I mean, there's more? To. Yeah, so, like, I... I would be upset because I feel like there's so much potential there with Crimson Dawn and Darth Maul and Kira. Like that is a plot that I want to see more of. I could see them doing a mini series at this point, but I don't know about like movies anymore because it did lose a significant amount. Yeah. But what would you guys give Solo on a scale of one to 10? I guess we should do this with all of We should do this with the sequels. Yeah, we should do. We'll go. Back, we'll go back and do that. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, what would I give Solo out of ten? Yeah. I'm gonna go with seven point five. Maybe an eight, depending on the mood I'm in that day. <laughs> Is that just because of Mall? That and also, <laughs> I I thoroughly actually enjoyed how action packed it was and the fast paced, and I thought Alden Iron Reich. Uh, however you want to pronounce his last name i thought he was really likable coming in and playing a character that everyone already knows and loves as harrison ford like i feel like that was a huge challenge and i thought he did like a surprisingly good job in my opinion so i would give it a seven i'd give it a seven yeah uh, i would give it a 6.5 i was really? gonna say 6.5 but then i realized i actually enjoyed it because i was expecting to hate alden ehrenreich with my entire soul really so okay that's good I just, I, I don't know. Like, I like I think you said it, Kat. Like, I, I would have chosen a lot of other movies before I would have made this one. Mm -hmm. And despite it being better than I thought, it still is is just, like, a, a slightly above average movie to me. And I would rather watch almost any other Star Wars movie besides the sequels, I would think. Mm. I would rather watch Rogue One. I would rather watch any of the prequels. And so that's kind of how I got to 6.5. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. Oh, that's going to Rogue One now, honestly. I thought, I, dude, Felicity Jones is such a good actress. And mm -hmm. I also love Jen Erso's character. Like, I just love her character. Like, I feel like there could have been more. I think uh, uh, Mads Mikkelsen was really cool, too. Oh, my um, God. Yeah. I love him. Like, he's such a good actor, too. He's so yes. sick. He's, he, he's up there with, like, Liam Neeson, too, honestly. Just his presence. Is mm -hmm. I love but, the Swedish accent. Like, yeah. Him and yeah. Thrawn. I know they're brothers, but <laughs> like, yeah. their accents are so good. Mm -hmm. Um. And what's his name? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, Mendelssohn. Ben, ben Mendelssohn. Yes. Ben Mendelsohn. He's amazing. That. He's so good. Dude, what was funny is that when I was watching that, I like totally didn't like him at first because I thought it was like, what's up with his voice? But then I, it was like, I feel like his delivery was very weird and everything at first. But then watching it over and over, it's kind of like when you hear a song for the first time, you're like, oh, I don't like that. But then you keep kind of like remembering it. And then you like play it again. You're like, oh, wait, I like that song. It's the same thing with his acting and his voice and his mm. presence. I didn't like it at first. And then as time has progressed, I fucking love it. And yeah. I think I think in in Mandalorian, they totally copied him with that that random um, 
Imperial officer who uh, Bill Burr just shot. Remember that episode? I think they like were 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 going Good more towards point. towards Ben Mendelsohn's character or Bill Mendel, whatever his name is, towards his character. I loved how selfish he was. Like, just he's like your prototypical like imperial officer who's just out for himself. Yeah, yeah. And he did it perfectly, and and he had some great quotes too. Like, are we blind? Yeah. Yeah. Deploy, deploy, deploy the, the garrison. garrison. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Man, uh, really, a man of your talents? <laughs> we stand here amidst my achievements. <laughs> dude, dude, the, uh, like in the trailer when he was like, the power that yeah. we are dealing with here. Yes. Uh, the that's, not, that, that, that's not even in the movie, right? Right? I don't think it is. I would have, oh, dude, I wish it was, man. We should work. Oh, this movie is so good. And I love how he gets killed by his own creation. Like that was. I know. All right, one one to ten. Nine. Honestly, I think Rogue One is so incredible. I would rewatch it anytime, any day. Also, one of the best movie theater viewing experiences, and the the element of surprise, and the fact that nothing really got leaked, and that we were able to just enjoy that Darth Vader hallway scene no idea what we were in store for so like that I haven't felt like that in a movie theater since seeing that in Rogue One so I think the only thing that keeps it from being a 10 is the soundtrack really yeah I think the soundtrack was heavily lacking um in like a lot of departments for some things I felt very like generic and like like, I know they were trying something different, but it just kind of was like, it didn't feel like Star Wars, like in that regard. Everything else was perfect. The soundtrack was, I remember after, I remember leaving it the first time, I was like, I didn't hear any, I didn't hear any like memorable tracks that I'd want to go search. Yeah, there's know? not really a standout. No, kind of it's all just, it. it's all just overlaid like any other movie, you know, and that's mm-hmm. the only thing that, that detracts from it. Everything else is great though. So I'd, I'd give it a nine too. I actually don't think any of the new like Disney era Star Wars films have had great soundtracks. Like Race it, Race theme. Yeah, that's like one <laughs> song though. Like when you look at the prequels, like freaking every track is yeah. incredible. The originals, mm-hmm. every track is incredible. I would give the Rogue One going back to the grading, I would give it an eight point five because I don't love the first half of the movie. Uh absolutely love the second half. I think the second half where they get to Scarif is perfection like yes but the first half kind of like eh, it's okay but yeah i like the first half good for you <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad it's you definitely did. slow uh, it hops uh, around and but mm. i feel like it has good pace to it though i don't know a lot of, there's a lot of like struggle and a lot of like you know uh, uh moments of uh suspense and, and I, I i i felt like it overall the entire film was just you know something that i could just you know, always watch. It's yeah. Not like I'm going to like watch it and be like, oh, I, like I have to put a disclaimer. Like I have to cringe while watching a certain part, you know, with the yeah. Movie. Or yeah. like Rogue One, something I can watch the entire thing with someone and, you know, just get lost with it and not worry about certain things. Can we just, just like talk about how random it is that they got like Saw Gerrera to from the Clone Wars, from like a random arc of the Clone Wars yeah. to like come be in this movie? All right. So Force Awakens, what would you give it? One to 10. 7.5. Again, could be an 8, depending on how I feel certain times. Certain day. Yeah, I would say Force not, Awakens. One. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I would say Force Awakens fluctuates. It's the most stable about how I feel. It's I feel the most stable about that one in regards to all of the, the three sequel movies versus the other two. I fluctuate a little bit, but Force Awakens, I feel like I consistently am like, I enjoy this movie. I would, I'd give it an eight for nostalgia and memories. Um, it just because of like what that film meant to me at the time. I mean, it's, I honestly, I still would want, I still like watching it. You know, I don't, yeah. I have my issues now, you know, in retrospect, of course, but I'd give it an eight just because of, you know, how immersive and how, how revolutionary it was for Star Wars. Um, uh, yeah. Eight for me. What's, what, what about you, Zach? I would give it as, I mean, it's it's hard because if I want to look at it knowing what I know about what came next, I think it does impact the way I watch that film. So I would give it a seven. But if I go back to like the first time I watched it, 
and the excitement surrounding it, probably an eight. That's what I'm basing it off of. I, I don't I don't even want to I don't want to bring it down because of the sequels because really it's like you want to look at it as as a standalone in that regard now. Mm-hmm. All right, the Last Jedi, the infamous, divisive, the million dollar question. Yeah. Okay, if I'm being real, should we establish our scale? Should we like one to two means this, three to four means that, five to six means this, seven to eight means that, nine to ten means this? Like terrible, one to two, uh, three to four is like bad, <laughs> uh, f- five to six, and then other contexts, five to six is like it works, but Maybe it could be cruel. better. Uh, like it works, but it could be better, and then um, seven to eight is. Uh, Definitely, solid. definitely solid, like definitely rewatchable. And then um, nine to 10 is like one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. That in mind then. Yeah. Well, there's a little bit late for that though. Cause we already have graded. Like, uh, three yeah. films. <laughs> no, I know. But I think, I think we all in the, I think we all in, the back of our, in the back of our head already kind of did that. Yeah. Um, I think my, my ratings still stand as they are. I was going to say probably. I, my instinct is to say like around six and a half ish because truthfully I would never rank any Star Wars movie below a six and that's just me as like a shill or whatever but like it genuinely like I don't despise a Star Wars movie that much to not rank it any lower than and then like around a six like even I know that movie has its flaws, but like I still loved it the first time I saw it, despite some of my, you know, confusion and anger. Um, and yeah, I feel like the the further removed I get from that movie, and I will say, having the rise of Skywalker now, I feel like I am able to appreciate bits more of the Last Jedi now that everything is complete. So probably six, six and a half. Alexander Daniel. No, that's a fucking piece of shit, and I give it a three. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, I, dude, I can't fucking watch. I can't watch it, dude. I just seriously can't. It's just one of those things that, like, even if I have it on the background and I hear some dialogue, I'm like, dude, fuck. No. Like, like shit. Like why? Like why? You know? I even watch it in the background. See, that's the thing. I can't rewatch that movie very casually. Like, yeah, it's it's a three. It's only a three because of how beautifully shot it was. Yeah. Um, and like there were some good moments. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's just I there's just very little that I can say about that movie that I even want to talk about. Um, yeah, it's it's a fucking three. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I'm going to give it a three, too. (laughs) I don't know why I own the Blu-ray for that movie, but I do. I do, too. Every every time I see it, I'm like, God, it's such a waste of 20-something dollars. I I did it because I had to edit from it. That was the only reason I had it. Oh, no. (laughs) This movie made me so angry as a star wars fan like i it's unreal like i don't think it's the worst star wars movie but it just it definitely made me the most angry because it felt like it was purposefully disrespecting like everything that came before it and and us too and and it wasn't even our fault that we were excited it was they they set it up in the force awakens they hyped it up in between they're like oh we're gonna get all these these questions you have answered and then the movie told us that our questions were stupid and that they didn't matter Mm -hmm. and it's like what are you doing like I just feel disrespected as a fan. Um, Dang, I had no, I was like, not expecting this. If you, <laughs> if, you, if you think about it from a non Star Wars perspective, it's nowhere near a three. Like, it's not a Star Wars movie, dude. Like, there's, there's nothing about it that screams yeah, Star it, Wars. It's it such a weird. It tries to film. not, it tries to not be a Star Wars film almost. Like, it, it, it takes everything that Star Wars is and I think casts it aside. It was. It was forgotten. <laughs> it was it was destined to be so much more. <laughs> yeah, dude. God oh damn my it. God. I, I have issues. Um, <laughs> no, that tied in perfectly. Anyway, uh Tros. Tr- Tros, as Alex would say. Tros. 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 <laughs> Uno, dos, tros. 
Gross. <laughs> oh my hey, God. it works. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, okay. So we got three, three, six point five. Yeah, dang. <laughs> I sound generous Who now. Gave it a six point five. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay so how do you drop someone from a call <laughs> <laughs> boom oh bands. that was perfect <laughs> that was perfect timing <laughs> oh my god um, um okay uh so now we go okay Tros, i'll go first on this one um i i made a post on my community tab about okay. what i thought of it yeah I said it was a 7.5 because I was like, yay, they completely ignored The Last Jedi and it was just a complete revamp start from Force Awakens going into like an actual, something that might have actually worked maybe. And the entire time they just were detracting from everything that The Last Jedi was doing. So I was like, okay, I love it for that. And then it got into some other like more more in-depth character stuff, some, some pretty cool sound editing, some cool set design. Um, whether it makes sense or not, it's still cool. Um, there were things about it, you know, that were iffy. But at the time when I first saw it, I was like, you know, satisfied for what it was. I was I was going in there expecting to hate it even more than the Last Jedi, and I didn't. So that was why I was like kind of happy, and I gave it a seven five. Looking back, it's definitely like a five or mm-hmm. a six. I was yeah. blinded by the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say probably also seven seven ish um again depends on my mood but yeah i i i said i again will say like this i did have a good like movie theater viewing experience i was able to avoid like the spoilers and leaks and so i went in having no preconceived notions or anything like tried to be really open-minded about it i loved how fast paced it was i was amazed that they were able to wrap everything up pretty you know Considering there were so many loose ends and so much left, so much work left to be done, I kind of was impressed that they were able to do it and, you know, keep it action packed and really moving the whole time. And I really was on the edge of my seat for a lot of it. So I give it, I give it a seven and I try to just not think about the, the things that, you know, couldn't be like, Anakin and try not to think about Raylo too much. And if I if I avoid the stuff that you don't want them to have little me, Ben Solo babies, come on. <laughs> if I don't dwell too much on the stuff that could have been, uh, then I then I like it, you know, a little bit more. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> here, here we go. <laughs> I I apologize, Cat, because I'm about to like disagree with you go ahead. No, <laughs> about seriously. a lot of that stuff but no, please, tear her a new one bro <laughs> please no this is what makes it exciting it would be um, boring if we were all like same same <laughs> i think that i think that this is the worst star wars movie and i i just like not only did i not care about it really going in and it still managed to be the worst to me that's that's like incredible to me that it like i didn't care i wasn't as invested and i still think it's the worst because um oh boy um (laughs) first of all i i don't like how fast paced it is i feel like by the end of that movie i have the same feeling that i get when i watch like a transformers movie where it's just it's all action (laughs) there there aren't these small moments like these quiet moments between characters that like for example empire has where it's like han and leia in the millennium falcon on the asteroid hiding from the empire they have these character develop character character development character building moments and I just don't, I don't think the Rise of Skywalker has that because it's always like, we got to go get this thing to get this thing, to get into this thing and to get to, uh, what's that last planet called? Um, where Palpatine is? Oh, Exegol. Uh, yeah, Exegol. Wow, how the hell did you remember that? I remember because the she, X she, sound. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something weird. I knew it was something weird. Yeah. But like, it's just the whole movie is breakneck and there's no time to kind of sit with the characters and, and, uh, you know what I mean? Pacing was a huge issue for me. I didn't like the fake out Chewbacca death at all. I thought that was like pretty poorly like done because they didn't show him dying. They were pretty vague about like, oh, that shit blew up. I actually really believed it for a second. I, I didn't believe it. At I, all. Did, I mean, I did. And I, I did see the leaks. Like, but oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you're a stupid asshole. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, I to put dude, a scientific term on it. I didn't like how all these these thousands of ships come out of the, the ocean fully stocked with crew, and it's like, where did this come from? You're not explaining any of this, JJ. Like, there's no explanation. It's going too fast. I just want this to be over. I never want to watch this movie again in my entire, entire goddamn life. Have so you watched I'm, it since? No, I've I've seen it twice. I, I I saw it once with my friend and once with my girlfriend in theaters. Didn't buy the Blu-ray because I learned from the, the Last Jedi. I'm gonna give it a two. The, the short answer is I'm gonna give it a two. I I, I think it it's just I think it's a terrible movie and I I don't want to watch it again in my entire life. No, respect it. So we got to do in the studio, we got to uh, Zach watches the Rise of Skywalker after two years. Yeah, yeah I mean, like we talked about it today, but it's been a while since I've seen. Well, it's like when you, when you watch it, it's different because you yeah. watch it with you. And then if they have the same opinions, they can, you know, you know what I'm talking about? It's kind yeah. of like that, like more interpersonal way of, of discussing the films.